It's time to play ball. Welcome to the podcast with no limits. Whether it be sports, current events, or random thoughts, this is the place to step in and stay a while. Your host is a proud alumnus of Rio Hondo Prep, a former minor league baseball umpire, and a man with strong opinions. Welcome to the Get Home Safe podcast and your host, Matt Persima. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Get Home Safe. Sometimes I have to pause there for a minute because I do have the two podcasts going. Some of you, I think most of you are listeners to both podcasts, the Get Home Safe podcast, as well as the Charge to Keep podcast, which I'm very Excited to get back going again here in the summer, the official podcast of Real Hondo Prep Football. I've been busy with that for uh, the past few weekends, which is why I'm a little behind once again on my Get Home Safe podcast episode. But here I am, Tuesday night, uh, long day at work, hustle home, had some dinner, and uh, here we are recording a podcast. The sun is still out, although it's been kind of overcast and 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 eh, look, not cloudy and such uh, today, but. Here we are. I told you guys I'm going to try to do these on the weekends if I can, but I was uh, doing some charge to keep podcast things, honestly, that took a lot of my time and uh, just being transparent with you guys in that regard. But here we are, another episode of the Get Home Safe podcast. I'll try not to I'll try not to go so long. I, as I know, some of you guys, you know, when you just tune in for just me, it's kind of like, all right, Matt, get to the point, say your two cents so we can move on. And I, I know your guys' time is valuable. So uh, welcome to another episode. My goal is to have another episode out this weekend so that this kind of counts for last weekend. And then, you know, we'll, we'll have another one out uh, uh, this Saturday or Sunday. That is the plan. I'm doing more charge to keep stuff as well. But I do have an announcement to make for both podcasts. It's not really um, breaking news or anything because I did uh, make the announcement on uh, our social media platforms already. But we do have a new way to watch the podcast. Uh, we we broadcast this through YouTube. Typically, uh, Spotify does have a video portion uh, of their um, of their episode release for our podcast. Both of them, the uh, charge to keep and get home safe. But uh, a new way to watch the po- the podcast online uh, is Rumble.com. And for those of you who don't know about Rumble, uh, Rumble is just an alternative uh, video website that has been um, utilized the past few years. Uh, it, they're a lot more open to, uh, I don't know, free speech. And a lo- you're seeing a lot of so-called conservative people migrate toward that or having their podcast out there on top of YouTube. Guys like uh, Russell Brand, who's who is no way a conservative dude, but, uh, you know, he just believes in like free speech and, and you know, liberty and things. So he, he's a liberal dude, but he has a, a, his podcast platform, I believe, is Rumble. So a lot of people are utilizing this. Um, financially, I think it's a good way. For a lot of uh, people to to make a move and to to monetize, I'm not necessarily looking looking at that. Although if it gets to the point, if either podcast grows enough where, hey, we we might be able to bring in advertising or whatever, then of course I'm going to embrace that. But for now, it's just honestly another alternative for uh for the people out there. Let's get ready to rumble, if you will. Um, you know, I know a lot of people watch YouTube. That's where most of our plays come from. Uh, both the uh, both podcasts, as I mentioned, but. I figured it would be another great way for the the podcast to to continue to grow. Just to be on another platform is pretty cool. And um, you know what? For some people out there, they're looking to break away from YouTube for whatever reason. And I want to support that. I want to uh, help people support me, you know, if you will. So rumble.com, if you haven't done it already, go on there, create an account, or, or you, maybe you don't even need one, but, you know, like and subscribe the, the, the Get Home Safe and the Charge to Keep podcast. Uh, I've been busy the past week or so putting up as many episodes as I could uh, for as far as the get home safe podcast goes pretty much January season four uh, up until now, which hasn't been that many. I tried to put everything I had saved uh, up there. So that's been uh, put up as far as the charge to keep pod. I went back and kind of did some individual videos uh, of some interviews that uh, I, I did with, uh, you know, special guests and special episodes. I put the new schedule release up there. So uh, there's some full content o- already going on both platforms. So if you would uh, like to, again, try to do something different or try something new, maybe you don't like the way YouTube does things. 
Well, you got Rumble, rumble rumble.com, and I will continue to put the podcast on YouTube, uh, now on Rumble as well as uh, Spotify, uh, uh, Apple, uh, Google, Google Podcasts, which is what I listen to most of the time. Uh, and of course, Amazon is, is an Amazon music is another great way to listen to the pod. So a lot of options here. We're just continuing to grow, man. Back in January of 2020, it was just me talking into, uh, this phone that sits beside me. And as a fun fact, I was actually in my car driving the very, very first episode of the get home safe podcast, not having any idea what I was doing, just started rambling away. So what better way than to hear me ramble than to go on? Rumble. I don't know. Does it work? I, don't, it, I I provide you options, guys. And in my world, in my head, it at least makes me think that, okay, we're growing a little bit because I know that I know the Get Home Safe podcast listens have 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 been stagnant. And I understand that when I at, at my high point, I was bringing you guys a new guest every week. I had Bill Barnes on. I was doing my own personal show. Heck, during the pandemic. Sorry, not pandemic lockdown. When we're all uh, prisoners in our own homes. Um, I had you five guests, five days a week. We had guests. So I understand the evolution and the de-escalation of the podcast, if you will. So I appreciate those who continue to, to dive in. And that's why I've, I've started doing the, the short reels on Instagram and, uh, you and Facebook from our shows just to kind of, you know, some people like listening in that regard. And I'm just trying to provide options, guys. We got so much at our fingertips. I'm trying to use my powers for good, if you will. And I can't believe, uh, once again, how far uh, we have come from, uh, you know, back back from my the awful audio equipment I had, me not knowing how to plug anything in. Heck, uh, even years before that, I didn't even know what Wi-Fi was. And here we are doing not one but two podcasts. So go on Rumble. Give us a like. Give us a follow. Uh, check it out. You can pretty much find anything on there or some of your favorite commentators anyway on rumble.com, much like you can on YouTube. So it's just another option, guys. No pressure, but I wanted you guys to be aware of that. A uh, few topics today. First of all, you guys who, you guys who live with women, I, every time I turn around, there's new plants somewhere. And I've given the blessings. So I was like, yeah, go right ahead. But I mean, I didn't expect it to be uh, the Garden of Eden or the secret garden or whatever garden like every time i turn around there's a plant i'm like we're indoors how are there plants indoors well she's down there working on the garden right now outside that we have which hey i, I get to put up a bunch of sports stuff so i guess it's a fair trade-off but i'm just like i try to put the window down and up and i got plants growing there a little i shouldn't complain i'm a i'm a blessed man and uh but, but yeah every time i look around i was moving some stuff to set up right now i'm just like why are there plants everywhere that that was for outside, but anyway, uh, well, let's get to it. So we talked about Rumble. I want to talk to you guys about uh, extra innings in baseball. And a few weeks ago, I chatted about that eighth inning feeling, right? Finishing the day, focus and finish, which is something I've been really trying to do in my everyday life. But I was uh, explaining to Val. We had a, I had a friend in town this last weekend, uh, an umpire who we go way back, and he was in town working a local series. He stayed with us. And uh, saved a few bucks in the hotel room, and we got to uh, to hang out. And it was great seeing him. And I was watching one of his games. You know, we're, I'm rooting for fast games uh, as just the 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 friend of the umpire watching him on uh, ESPN three as as I'm at home. And uh, one of his games got in the in the very end of the game. There was a late base hit or something that tied the game, and they went extra innings. And I was having the conversation with Val. I'm like, you have no idea what that feels like as an umpire, it's one of the weirdest feelings. Like you're never rooting for, for a result, but it's just like, it's just like your day just got extended or your work day. And for those of us that now work, you know, eight to five or whatever it is, I was telling her, I was like, imagine if you were not only oh, put all, most of the stuff away at your desk, uh, you, you've gotten up, you just like counting down the minutes. All right. Yeah. Just about time to go. You got gathered your belongings, you shut off lights, you're out the door basically. And your boss goes, Hey, wait, wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. Um, I, I'm going to need you to stay a little while longer. I know you put everything where you're pretty much done, you know, bottom of the ninth or whatever, but um, I'm going to need you to stay a little longer. And not only that, I'm going to need you to uh, work in a more intense situation than you've been working all day. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. I can lock in. I can, well, how, how, how much longer do you need me here? Honestly, I don't know. It, I, it may 
be until tomorrow. It, it may be uh, minutes. It may be hours. I don't know. And you all know that feeling, whether you're a full-time employee or whatever, when you when you take that first step out the door or the first step off the work site, maybe you're working for Care Youth League and you know it's something fun like coaching or whatever, you're done. The job is done. And it's like, wait, not yet. The worst feeling I ever had was uh, in 2017. I was working the American Association Championship Series. And it was game four of a five-game series. The home team, Winnipeg, was uh, trailing two games to one. I had just worked the plate in game three. Um, you can find all that still on uh, YouTube and stuff, too, if you're bored one day. But runner on tying run on second, ninth inning, ground ball. Uh, they throw the, to first base. Wichita, the Wichita lung nut, what were they? The wing nuts, whatever they were. They storm the field thinking they've won the, the championship of the American Association. We're about ready to walk off the field. What we didn't realize is one of our partners had called a balk. Now, for the record, I don't hate the guy. I'm not mad at the guy. Um, he called something that I didn't see. And it was the most awkward feeling ever to clear the trophy from the, <laughs> the pitcher's mound, basically. It'd be like, hey, the game's not over. You move the runner to third. There's still two outs. You get the team off the field that thinks they just won a championship. And wouldn't you know it, whether you're an atheist or whatever you are, there are baseball gods. And the baseball gods uh, struck us a, a single. <laughs> or it was a double, actually. And uh, the tying run was scored, and we went 18 innings. <laughs> After that, uh, about six hours. And um, it was the most. So from then on out, I've I've kind of been scarred by that. Whereas anytime I'm leaving a job or like, I'm like, I'm always this like, make sure like over my shoulder attitude, like, wait, is it over? Like, is it really over? Is it over, over yeah, extra innings? I mean, eh, you just, you can never be too careful or too sure. <laughs> so I was explaining extra innings to Valerie being like, it's, it's the weirdest feeling ever. You not only do you, is your day extended? I mean, we've all had our boss ask us, Hey, can you stay a little extra? Yeah, no problem. But in baseball in extra innings in, I mean, you don't even have a, a clock up there like you would in, in overtime in football or uh, the hockey man. How about the hockey playoff? Sudden death, uh, RIP LA Kings. You're up two to one. You lose three in a row. I'm a little angry about it, but Hey, that's hockey. And those Edmonton Oilers just got the uh, LA Kings number uh, seven game series, hockey, greatest playoffs ever. Uh, New Jersey beats the, the Rangers, we got the Panthers beating uh, Boston. There's been all kinds of great upsets. It's been, it's been incredible, except for my LA Kings going down. Oh, well, there's always next year. So I talked about that eighth inning feeling a few weeks ago, but that extra innings feeling, as soon as a game goes to the extra, as soon as a, a team ties it, like you, you're not mad because you can't be. You're an impartial person, but you're just like, Okay, our work day just got longer and it just and it amps up and the intensity right in the 10th inning and in the 11th inning. It's like, yeah, however many extra innings you go, it's a bunch of ninth innings after that ninth inning. So uh, for those of you who have not umpired baseball, I think you can relate in some ways. But again, that extra inning feeling, it's an odd one. You're just and, and you just as an umpire, you got to just be like, hey. This is what we signed up for. We knew it might, it may never end and it might not. So focus and finish back to that kind of mentality and thing that I chatted about um, the other day. So I watched the NFL draft, right? Uh, I'm a degenerate and, and Valerie had asked, Hey, how long is the NFL draft? Like thinking it was, you know, a couple, a couple hours. I'm like, it's uh, actually three days. <laughs> and so um, I, she understood. She understood basically. I was like, be binge watching, and I wasn't glued to it the entire time. But there were some cool stories and things, and uh, I I just love the camaraderie um, of the NFL draft, uh, the other drafts too. But the NFL draft is the biggest one. You know where you're from matters. I, I think it's really cool when teams draft guys that are like in their backyard. Uh, Joey Porter Jr. being drafted by the Pittsburgh Steelers, where his dad played, uh, legendary all those years. That's awesome. I love when guys are drafted by the team in their state. Um, but I think there's a sense of pride in football more than any other sport about where you're from, where you played your college ball. Um, 
when they show these guys at their homes, like in, in Texas or Georgia, wherever they're from, I, I think there's a sense of pride of, of really regionally, like where you're from. And I, and I think that's really, really cool. And not just that, but like teammates and, and, you know, they're in on a football, there's so many guys on a football team, you know, you always joke and talk about, ah, you know, I'm sure in the NFL, they, they joke and talk about uh, and talk smack about their college teams. I know I did that in high school with, uh, my high school teammates regarding like care youth league, like, ah, oh, we're the Gators or oh, those are Indian or Atlantic. Like there was still little friendly rivalries that went on because again, I think where you're from matters. Who are you representing matters? That's always a really fun uh, concept and something I noticed uh, with the NFL draft th this past, this past week. And, and it got me thinking too about something, you know, I, I often talk about men and women differences and, you see so many guys watching the NFL draft, man, I'm so happy for him. That's so awesome. Oh, this young dude, he's worked so hard. He just became an instant millionaire. Like most men, uh, most of us cheering these guys on. Um, I think for the most part, we're happy for these guys. I am curious. I don't know if there's another like uh platform or scenario really where, I mean, there's the, there's the WNBA draft. Okay. Whatever there's the women's sports. I mean, it's just not as big of a deal, right. As, as some of the, the major ones. Uh, do you, could you guys see like other women being like, Oh man, good for her. I'm happy for her. That women, that woman just became an instant millionaire. Uh, I'm happy for her. I don't, I don't know if I'm just like imagining this, but I, I can't, for some reason that doesn't like make, seem like it would make sense to me. Like there wouldn't be this as much uh, sense of pride or joy for people that, again, that you've never met. I've never met these guys. Right. But it's cool to see some guys that maybe you watch a little bit and, and, and I love the adversity stories. So, uh, so that in that, in that regard, I think we would all get a, a agree with that, but I don't know. There's something about, uh, you know, men have their strengths and weaknesses and women have theirs. And it's, it's funny. I just tend to think that, Sometimes it's uh, a little more clicky uh, in in <laughs> with the other gender and just like, uh, you know, anger, not bitterness or jealousy. Just eh, I don't know what I'm trying to say there. I just I wrote it down. I thought I'd share it with you. And, uh, you know, maybe you guys are rolling your eyes uh, as well on that. But I, I don't know. Would women enjoy a draft as much as men? Just basically that. Hey, that good for him. Uh, good for that guy. Because with our buddies in general, I, I for the most part, like. I don't know. You're out with your buddies and you know, he gets some girl's number or um, I don't know. It's, I think men are a lot more congratulatory of their buddies and just like, and, it, and it's more real. It seems like, like when, when one of my friends achieves something and I get a text from, I'm, I'm overjoyed and thrilled with them. You know, there's no sense of like uh bitterness for me, but that's also just uh, that's also just could, could just be me. And, and maybe has nothing to do with gender. Who knows? I'm just throwing it out there as a thought that I had watching the uh, the NFL draft because I because I was like why do I like watching this why do I like watching teams million billion dollar teams pick kids out of high school who had great careers and are continuing into the professional ranks why do I I don't know why I, I can't explain it it's just I think it's maybe the the blending or the merging of the two uh the the two different sports or the same sport the the two different levels so I can't explain it. Sometimes you can't, but again, I come on here and uh, spew into the mic just to uh, see if I can make sense of it. Uh, one more thing with the the draft is, you know, so many every it seems like every pick, however many there were, two hundred and fifty, whatever. Every pick, for the most part, these analysts up there, and I like Daniel, Daniel Jeremiah and Joe Klatt. To me, they're the best. The, the guys on the NFL Network were, were outstanding. Uh, ESPN guys, just a bunch of jokes in my opinion. But um, you never hear all these guys always project greatness in a player, right? Oh, this is a solid pick. This guy's going to have a great career. He's maybe he's got some, he's got some uh, learning to do or whatever, but th they always just project all these guys to be really, really good. If I would be more impressed with these broadcasters, if some of them actually projected, Hey, this guy's going to be a bust. You know, I'm trying to think back like Tim Tebow. Like there were a lot of people when he was drafted who were like, including myself, like really quarterback, in the first round, I I don't think so. Not not the NFL level, man. And I think that even though he won a playoff game and had a great winning streak um, at one point as an NFL starter, I think most of us were like, yeah, I don't know about that one. But I was rooting for him. 
but I, I would, I would just be more impressed with these analysts. Like it's almost like they're only allowed to get it wrong in one direction as far as like, yeah, this guy's going to be great. And then he's no good. And it's like, wait, you said he would be great. If or you say a guy's gonna be great and then he's he's great, you're like, yeah, see, I nailed that. But there's never like to make projections, which I found out on this podcast, I was terrible at as far as predicting games and things. Um, you got to be able to put yourself out there and sometimes predict or guess something the other direction. Again, not sure if you guys are following me, but it's just pick after pick after pick. All of every one of these broadcasters. Oh, I love the pick. This guy's got a bright future. Oh man, he's going to be a great contributor. He's going to do this and that. Like, I was like, really? All of them? All of them. What? I mean, and, and no one like, and, and it's not like there hasn't been proof. Uh, Jamarcus Russell. Hello. Uh, it was a big one. Uh, Ryan Leaf. I mean, there's been a ton of them. And I don't know. I just, I wish, I think it would be cool if more and more and more of these broadcasters would step up and just be like, Hey, here's, here's what I actually think. Here's my research. I've actually gone into this and I'm not just assuming this guy's going to be uh, a, a great player. That is, that's like really, really, you know, that's something that uh, you just have to say, I guess. Anyway, would women enjoy the draft? Something like the draft as much as men. Um, I'm not so sure. And again, the, 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 the broadcasters make, make a pick, man, make it, you know, give me, give me a, uh, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so back to uh, I told you guys I was running the clock for the for the Rancho Cucamonga Quakes, um, and just something I have seen firsthand that is definitely something new to baseball with a clock. And again, anytime you bring in replay or the clock or anything like that, you got to be careful what you wish for because there's at what's the the, the great phrase unintended consequences, right? Well, um. Basically, anytime a batter gets in a, a plate appearance, he gets one timeout uh, per at bat, per plate appearance. You know, otherwise, he has to be in the box, ready to hit with eight seconds remaining on, in our case, the 14 second uh, pitch clock. So, you know how guys would step out and they, you know, adjust something or they take their, their, their sweet time, right? Um, in general, in baseball. Well, with these pitch clocks, you don't have much time to screw around but they also don't want the hitters not to be able to utilize a timeout. Say the pitcher's holding the ball long, he's freezing him, or maybe you're late getting in the box and some, a, a fly buzzes in your eye, what, you know, something like that, you're going to be able to call timeout. Some guys would call timeout two or three times and not bat, and as an umpire, you'd have to be like, no, I'm not granting you timeout. Anyway, one of the things I saw was that, um, first of all, most of them would use their timeout with every at bat and they would usually do it after two strikes. So as soon as they get down two strikes, they would automatically take a timeout, step out, breathe a little bit. It was usually pretty quick, but the only problem is that when they did that, that pitchers again, with the two strike, the two strike uh, lead on, on, on a hitter, they're pitching ahead now and they know the hitters already used his timeout. Um, and this would come with runners on base also. So saying 18 seconds versus 14 seconds in, uh, in low a ball. Um, I think it's 20 and 15 in the big leagues, but I, I'm not so sure there, but anyway, it's the same stuff. And so what we, I would see repeatedly, and I'm watching this from an umpire perspective is that hitters would then get in the box after using a timeout and pitchers who had not been holding the ball to again, keep the hitter off, keep his timing off. That's just something pitchers have always done, especially with runners on base. Um, it, you know, they talk about throwing over a lot, uh, uh, you know, pickoffs. More often than not, uh, the best thing uh, pitchers could do with base runners is to vary your hold. Come set, deliver. Next time, come set, wait, wait, wait some more. Because that, that base runner is trying to time out to see if you're – if you have a rhythm to your timing, to your, to your timing, your set as well, all the little intricacies of baseball that make it great. Well, what I've saw pitchers started to do is using the clock in their favor. Cause you got to remember the pitchers can see the clock. The hitters can too, but there's nothing more uncomfortable for a hitter. In my opinion, from again, umpire standpoint, not as a hitter, but that where you're standing there waiting and waiting and waiting and the pitchers freezing you um, again, previously you just call time. But if you've already used the timeout under these new rules with the pitch clock, so now a pitcher would come set 
and the hitter's got to be ready at eight, eight seconds, right? So you want to be ready at about nine, you know, not, not, not too late so that you get that automatic strike on you. And so nine seconds, dude, of staring at a pitcher who's already come set maybe. Um, but even if he doesn't come set, you, you're ready to hit at nine. He comes set at eight. Think how long that is. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. That's a long time on a baseball field, especially uh, when not anything's happening. It's this anticipation. So pitchers have learned to hold the ball. If they get their signal from the catcher. They're ready to go and hold the ball as long as that pitch clock will go because they know they got eight seconds to deliver the pitch now. And the hitter can't do anything about stepping out. And the base runner, if I was a base runner, I would almost be like, well, no, because the pitcher could technically throw over unless he's used to already. Because so as some base runners are seeing uh, kind of break at that one, they're guessing as the clock goes down to one, they're breaking for second. And if they're, if they're wrong, they're wrong. Uh, if the pitcher happened to step over, step off and throw um, again, if he's already used those fine, but it, it's so much going on now with the game, with this pitch clock. And you guys are going to see more and more of these types of things. Um, I was fascinated by it all because it was like, okay, they've learned to kind of manipulate the, the rules a little bit, which which all good players and all good coaches do. And it's up to umpires to stay ahead of that stuff to, to be prepared. When I was talking about the hitters, the, you know, it's awful feeling when you're waiting there, for, you know, ready ready to go to hit. It's the same thing as, as a plate umpire. You're You're locked in. And you're waiting and waiting and waiting. Okay, when is he ever going to throw it? I'm still focused. I'm locked in. I'm dialed. I'm uh, time like stands still in those moments. And times when the hitter would call time in the past, it was almost like a sense of relief. Like, yeah, time. I I need it too. Like I can't, I'm looking out there waiting for the thing, and the anticipation will kill you. If if nothing else, with your eyes it, internally, it gets you maybe. Just and again, baseball at any sport, you're just looking for that minor advantage, right? That that little if I can make this guy's heart beep beat one second faster or whatever, just before this pitch, that's an advantage to me. That like those are the little innuendos and things in baseball again that make that that sport a lot different than others. But that I also think uh with this clock, you, you're gonna see ways to 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 use that, right? And, and no longer um can a pitcher, you know, really quick pitch guys, because by rule, uh, he needs to be able to make eye contact with the hitter or whatever. Cause so many guys, I, I've talked to you guys about that before, how weak that was. It's like, really, that's how you got to beat the guy is by just tempo or whatever. So some things, the clock has really been good, good for. Um, and again, fast games, I'm all in favor of it, but teams are smart players, coaches, they're very smart and they're going to adapt to, to the rules. And, and again, 51% of the gray area, man, is what is what every team's going for, and, and they want 50, 51% of it, and they're going to find a way uh, to make that happen. So I thought I'd share that with you guys. Again, I, I, I'm i not back to the Quakes I think, until next week, but these are some things that I've noticed, and I was like, okay, I see what's going on, and they're also teaching these younger guys in A-ball how and where to, uh, to, to make these adjustments, to make these uh, these little tactical maneuvers. And so it's fascinating to see. And if you're not a, a baseball fan, like people say they're a baseball fan or they're, oh, yeah, wear their team hat or whatever. And, you know, hey, oh, how'd your team do last night? Oh, I don't know. Like <laughs> the one beauty of baseball is that it's every day. So even if you're just checking a box score, uh, I mean, you should know if your team won last night. Just saying. And again, I don't really have a team. I got my Netherlands hat on here, you know, but other than that, I'm I'm kind of, I, I enjoy baseball. I enjoy the umpires. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tune in on the Dodgers if they're on the national broadcast or whatever, but usually you can't watch them. So, um, you do what you can and, uh, yeah, free tickets. I, I never turned down, uh, free tickets. So, um, well, usually I should say. So anyway, just a little baseball insight there. You guys will see it more if you guys watch. I know baseball is hard to watch, but it's easier now with the, uh, you know, the clock and the speed up rules and everything. And, um, I think you guys will uh, will start to see more and more of these, more and more of the things that made baseball great with that that maybe took a little bit of time. Well, now you can see all that stuff still happen, but just tweaked a little differently and just like in a smaller time frame, if you will. So 
Uh, if you have more questions or, or want some insight on these things, I always appreciate when the fans, uh, you listeners, both of you, uh, reach out to me. It's always great to hear from you guys. Charge this charge to keep. Get home safe pod at Gmail or get home safe podcast at yahoo.com. I think our two email addresses still. Okay. So congrats to all the the uh, the big the the new football players in the NFL. I think it's great. Really cool to see when uh, hard work uh, pays off. There was one other thing I wanted to do. Oh, I have two great potential guests coming on. Um, I'm teasing that for you guys. I don't know when it's going to come out or when I can do it, but I'm fired up for them and I want to get these uh, these interviews out. Uh, one is a is a kind of a group interview that some guys that have been on before, but I think together would be a lot of fun. And another one is a fresh face, someone that I just found out I know who's in a profession doing something I really, really like that uh, I said, I have to talk to you about uh, your craft and, and some of your your front row seats, if if you will. And, and that's all I'll say about it for now, but uh, you don't want to miss some of the uh, new uh, Get Home Safe podcast episodes uh, coming forward. Um real real commercial break if you will i was i've for, for years i've had i think i got them at williamsburg on a summer trip they were these four documents of freedom the declaration of independence uh, the constitution the bill of rights and the gettysburg address and they were all like in this uh, original not original but you know how the old old paper it almost looks orange right anytime you see you know photos of the declaration and this and that so uh, I got four of those when I was probably in high school. I'm pretty sure. Maybe maybe my first year out of high school, but it was one of those summer trips. And I just remember being like, hey, one day I want to frame these and I don't know where I'm going to live, how I'm going to live, whatever, whatever. Just like I liked having stuff up on the walls. I still do that like kind of means something or is meaningful, not just photos, but like I have the Rams uh, – Super Bowl, Sports Illustrated cover, a Cooper Cup. I had a nice wood um, wood picture uh, that I bought, and that's framed. I have a, a Lenny um, Lenny Dawson uh, photo in, in our living room. I have a couple baseball, black and white, like old school baseballs that, uh, baseball in a glove that my mom bought me. Uh, I think it was high school, maybe college, but that was very precious to me. But I found these, these documents, and I just never got around to doing it. And man, I want to say 20 years have gone by, uh, at least 15 years, maybe probably 20 years though, where I've had these documents folded up in a drawer and I'm like, I want to hang those someday. And so it's funny when you get motivated to do things. I was just, you know, we, we had all the different things we've set up in the house and I was just like, this is something I really, really want, especially with m our theory or my theory, I guess is, you know, with decorations, you got the fall Halloween stuff. Then you got the, the Christmas stuff. January, February, March, eh, there's not really much going on. You probably put up some St. Patrick's Day stuff or whatever. And then the summer to me is all about uh, patriotic. You got Memorial Day and 4th of July. Um, I, I think it's it's a time to uh, put out your red, white, and blue. And so uh, we do the staircase. We put out flags and stuff. I think it's a great time. But I said, you know what? I want these on the staircase full time because these are important. I know most people are like, the, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, uh Declaration of Independence, that's all nonsense from just you know, our our, our uh, white oppressors or found the founding fathers, the founding uh, stepfathers, whatever you want to call them. You know, everyone hates those guys, but without them, we would never be here. So um, <laughs> baffling to me. So I got these things. Uh, I wanted to get them framed and I, and I went to Michael's originally and was like, hey, here's what I, I got these documents I want to frame. And they, they want to charge me an arm and a leg. And I just. For years, I've actually looked this up, but I've never been able to do it. But I got to give, I think it's arttoframe.com. Art, A-R-T-T-O-F-R-A-M-E.com. They made it really easy. Again, not a sponsor, just a free commercial. If you have something, because what I did is I, as I, is I measured these documents, and I did look on the back of the uh, Declaration of Independence that there was no treasure map, even an invisible one, like there was in um, National Treasure. I, I tried to find it and see, but you know, cause I'm always looking for money, but there was nothing there, unfortunately, but the uh, other documents, they're all different sizes and unique sizes, not your standard, you know, 11 by 12 or whatever standard piece of paper is. And, but they made it really easy. You could just type in your measurements and away it went. Anyway, that's they, those got delivered to me uh, last weekend and 
right away, put them up on the wall, hung them up the staircase. I took some uh, photos of it on my personal Facebook and Instagram page. And I just love it. I love them. Um, the documents of freedom. Uh, I even watched a little bit of the movie Gettysburg last, last weekend, just, uh, sentimental reasons i looked up and saw the gettysburg address i said i haven't watched that my, one of my favorite movies or my favorite movie in a long time so i guess good things come to those who wait i don't know what the moral of the story is except i found a really great uh framing place for the four documents of freedom and it, it's funny the things that finally push you over the edge to do things you know i i, I still have plenty of things i need to do that uh, i've been dragging my feet on um, I'm a, I'm a late bloomer, I guess you will, because of a lot of the other things I've uh, pursued in my life. And so, uh, yeah, I got a lot of, a lot of work to do, but I was so happy with my documents. I was like, I've wanted this up for like 20 years. Why didn't I do it sooner? I don't know. I, maybe it's my lack of, uh, construction ability and I I'll, I'll hang it sideways. I don't know, but, um, you get, you get better, I guess, at this thing called life. You just got to open your eyes and, and realize that you're, you're doing okay. You're not, I'm not doing great, but I'm doing okay. Uh, so art to frame. Thank you so much. Um, another thing that I've used as kind of a motivational tactic recently is um, looking at things, not a bunch of tasks I got to do in a, in a small amount of time, but I'm a slow learner. I'm a slow reader. I'm a, I'm slow at a lot of things, a uh, podcaster, but I kind of just started to have the attitude of 20 minutes. This will take 20 minutes. It And, and it's kind of like, that's my focus. That's my focus time. Um, I, I can, I can do small, I can do more small stuff in that amount of time. And it could be anything. Hey, go exercise for 20 minutes, not an hour, hour and a half. Do this for 20 minutes. Hey, read this. Hey, read the book you said you were going to read 20 minutes. That's not a long time. There's still, two more of those in an hour and there's 24 hours in a day. So you do the math. And I'm just like, I found that I can do more stuff in 20 minutes. Like even the podcast tonight, I was like, ah, I want to clean up shower. I'm on my way home. I'm just like, ah, you know, and you just, it's like, go do it. Just, just do it. It'll take less than 20 minutes to put everything together and get started. And once you start, you know, it's fine. But that's kind of been the, the motivation for me the past few weeks with a lot of just different, different topics, different things. Hey, Let's do this now. It'll take 20 minutes and it'll be done and over with and off my mind, as my father used to always say. <laughs> uh, but if if you look at things like 20 minutes, I think you'll be. And, and again, if you want to read longer than that or work out longer than, or or uh, do anything, you know, cooking, cooking a meal, like sometimes you can do things and you can spread things out too if you want. Like 20 minutes, let's go do this for 20 minutes, take a break. Let's go do another 20 minutes, take a break. I, I tend to, to work better that way, knowing that it's not going to be a long drawn out thing. Um, something as simple as like laundry works for me because it's just like, okay, this is a short task. Just go do it. It's not going to take more than 20 minutes to gather and to push the button. And then it's a waiting game or whatever and you do the other stuff. But 20 minute tasks, I guess, is uh is helping me achieve more goals and to do more things um because i'm i'm totally fine and and my mindset is is all good with the the concept of like hey let's wake up we got a 12 14 hour day ahead of us whatever it is um no one we're not looking for sympathy from anyone let's just go let's grind rise and grind right but i also operate better with the whole because there's no excuse then. If you say, well, you got 20 minutes. Because we all we may have very busy days. But I want like for an example, something I wanted to start doing as I'm getting older is to just be a little more uh flexible, right? Obviously, exercise and all that is very, very important and, and should be doing more of it anyway. But something I was like, 20 minutes. When things start to get tight, I'm like, why am I not doing this every night? Why am I not taking 15 minutes, not even 20 minutes, you know, to to stretch, just stretch the hamstring, stretch the back a little bit. That's not even as, um, what do you call it? Intense. It's not even that is as intense as say working out is. And so I was like, yeah, that's not, that's something I can commit to doing and just do it every night. Plus you'll feel better. You know, you're out running around all day. Just like when you're, when you're a teenager, you're playing sports, you stretch things out. So why would you not do that as an adult? Uh, when you're having a more physical day. And even if you're not having a physical day, I mean, that's an opportunity to stretch out your tight body. So I am obviously no fitness guru, but that's something I am trying to do a better job of because 
uh, man, if you're, if you're more flexible, you can be more active. And, and so that, that's just the little things I'm learning about myself and about life. And you guys probably don't need to hear me uh, talk about all this, but I, I just, again, this is opportunity for me to, to get things off my chest and to, uh, to talk about very, very, uh, random things. Uh, receiving criticism is something I I've kind of been up and down with over the years. Um, some people are not good at it at all. Like they can't take any criticism and it's like, okay, you're kind of worthless. If, if you can't take criticism, how are you going to get better at anything? But we live in this world now of, Oh, he yelled at me. Oh. It's like, yeah, he yelled at you because you were wrong. You needed to be yelled at. And sometimes we shouldn't be, but I just remember back in like playing days, when I would get criticism or I get yelled, I, I felt so bad. I felt like I failed. And uh, I did fail rec recently at work. I failed repeatedly. And when my boss comes to me and talks to me, um, he's very direct. And I appreciate that about it. He doesn't embarrass me, but he's very direct and firm but fair. And so some people cannot receive an ounce of criticism. It's hilarious. And I'm just like, dude, especially for – I have so many friends who are like umpires – and um, I, I would say they're pretty good at receiving criticism because they had to be. But sometimes in, in other aspects of life, they're not. And I'm like, dude, cr criticism isn't always bad. Uh, good feedback, however you want to say it. Uh, constructive criticism is a good thing. But I think a lot of us, we get very defensive. You know, I, I've been there. And we're like, what? How could he say that? And after you think about it, you're like, well, I did kind of deserve it. So receiving criticism, I'm, I've seen around – the country and the world the past few years, it's like no one can do it anymore. No one can take criticism or take feedback with a grain of salt. Even if you know you're not in the wrong, I want you to listen to it and maybe you'll learn something from it. Maybe you'll learn something perception wise from somebody that like, Hey, they thought I, I was lazy in this situation. Maybe I wasn't lazy, but it looked like I was lazy. How can I come across not looking lazy? Like there's so much you can learn if you just like use the two ears and your two eyes so much of us get caught up in our, in our mouth. We just, oh, what? No. And you just slow down, listen to criticism, get some feedback. And maybe you don't like what the tape has to say, you know, to, to use a game film analogy. But if you don't look at it, you don't listen to it. You'll never learn. You may learn something. You, you may not learn anything, but I don't know. And in, in receiving criticism, uh, I had kind of a, a bitter heart, not a bitter heart. I had like a, my heart was hardened uh, a few weeks ago and I was angry and I received some criticism. I knew it was coming and I tried to be open-minded about it, have a good attitude. And most of the criticism I've received, I've deserved. And I'm like, yeah, I needed to hear that. And it doesn't always feel good, but I think it's important to have that open mind to receive it because it's going away, man. People now are like, no authority, no anything. No, I will not listen to you. And it's just like, whoa. We can't have that. I mean, that's that's uh, that's anarchy. That's uh, 2023, I guess, is the best way to say that. Uh, in closing the show today, there's something I, I wanted to do. Uh, I didn't rehearse this, so forgive me if I if I butcher this, but uh, I'm going to pull something up right now. Um, I saw this on uh, YouTube a few times, and it's a 10-minute video. We may not get through all of it, but it's five quotes from Orwell's 1984 that have come true. This is as of 2022. And for those that don't know, I've never read the book. I've never seen the movie, although I wouldn't mind seeing the movie. It's a 1984 release, I believe, of the movie 1984. And I hear a lot of commentators, a lot of uh, conservative uh, media outlets and, and radio talk shows and podcasts. I hear a lot of people reference how crazy it is that the times we're living in are so much weirder and wilder than uh, Orwell. The predicted in, in 1984. And uh, I think there's some truth to that. I, I didn't really, again, the book was, was released in uh, I think the 1950s uh, when Orwell put this George Orwell, 1984, it was written. Let's see, had you Googled this in advance? Uh, it was written in 1949. So, after the Civil War, or Civil, of course, the Civil War, after World War II, excuse me. Well done, Matt. I had the Civil War on my mind, so forgive me for misspeaking. But um, written in 1949, and it's about a dystopian uh, future where, you know, 
it's a basically a prediction when this guy wrote it in the forties of what he thought 19, why he picked the, that year 84. It's kind of weird. I was born in 85. That would have, that would have been a cool name for a book. Uh, but anyway, it was a dystopian social science fiction novel and cautionary tale by English writer, George Orwell. And it basically was predicting what life would be like and how, you know, there's utopia and dystopia, right? And we all know a lot of people want to live in some utopia that that's, doesn't really exist. Well, the dystopian future is basically uh, how how bad things could get, really. And this came right after World War II, right? So it was interesting to see that the, the author, authorita authoritarian state, uh, people talk about uh, oh, things being Orwellian or whatever. Um, the novel basically, uh, this is a, let's see here, this is, the novel examines the role of truths and facts within societies and the way in which they can be manipulated. Yeah, I'd say there's a lot of that going on these days. So let me pull up this video right now and watch uh, a, just a, a little clip. I'll read to you guys kind of uh, as it happens, and we'll wrap up the show there. I just found it interesting. Here is a, a quote from the book. Every record has been destroyed or falsified. Every book rewritten. Every picture has been repainted. Every statue and street building has been renamed. Every date has been altered. Well, that sounds familiar. That, I mean, I, who would think that would happen? But uh, books rewritten, we're seeing that happen, right? Books being changed, street buildings, uh, or street street buildings, uh, streets renamed. Uh, they then show a picture of Thomas Jefferson's statue being removed from a uh, city hall. So that's just an example. You hear all the statues and things that are uh, taken down, right? Because, oh, so-and-so did nothing good. He only did evil things, right? Uh, what's this? This is another update. Um, again, after, what they do is they show the quote from the book, and then they will... Uh, then they will show some examples. This is as of 2022. Uh, Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt statue being renamed. The Cleveland Indians receiving a new team name. That's another example that they are giving here. And these are all, they're showing like news clips basically of the, uh, of these happening in real time that are, um, that, that kind of tie into the quote from the uh, movie. Let's see, what's this one? University of Wisconsin, Wisconsin wants to remove a boulder from its campus at the request of minority students who view the rock as racism. So a rock is racist. That's kind of weird. Um, this is your dose of this is on a CNN clip. I mean, there's all kinds of uh, things like this that follow which each, each one of these quotes. Um, I'll skip ahead so we don't uh, go too much. But uh, let's go with another quote here. It's a beautiful thing. The destruction of. Of words. This is another quote again from the book or movie, however you want to see fit. I'll say the book for now. It's a beautiful thing, the elimination of words. Well, we're seeing a lot of that these days. There's certain words uh, you can't say, uh, and you know what? There are some. There are plenty of words that you shouldn't say. But uh, we we have changed a lot of uh, common sense words that 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 are just like okay, you know what they mean, really. Like uh, they give the example of uh, chairman. Uh, you know we get. Uh, Man basically speaks for man and woman, but uh, you know we can't be insensitive to people. Uh, another thing they did in Congress, they started to remove uh, father, mother, uh, father-in-law, mother-in-law with uh, other terms because again, those are offensive to possible people. Now we want to use terms like parent, child, sibling, spouse, parent-in-law. Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily talk that way. Himself or herself now is themselves. I mean. This is pretty wild that uh, if you don't look around at things going on around, and the fact that some of this stuff was predicted in a book is just wild to me. Uh, what's this one? Uh, that's more of that type of stuff I don't want to get to. Uh, I'm trying not to dive into that. Okay, here's the next quote we'll go to. What, these are five quotes. We've done two. We'll try to just keep it rolling here. Quote, what can you do against the, the lunatic who is more intelligent than yourself who gives your arguments a fair hearing and simply persists in his lunacy. What can you do against a lunatic who is more intelligent than yourself, who gives your arguments a fair hearing and simply persists lunacy? Okay, they show some, uh, wow, they show some uh, clips here of Kyle Rittenhouse and uh, that whole situation and how, 
that was swayed one direction or, or another about how, uh, <laughs> you know, he was just a, a terrorist out there going out to, uh, to kill people. Uh, the key witnesses in the, in the, in the uh, incident and the media's reaction to that whole thing was just, uh, it was crazy. They're showing clips here and I won't do them for you right now. Cause I don't want to bore you guys, but uh, plenty of, let me see. This is Biden on Kyle Rittenhouse. The jury system works and we have to abide by it. Okay. So that was again, people furious afterwards that a, a young man defended himself and uh, you know, went after some pretty bad people. <laughs> so anyway, I'll move on. But uh, there are people, I guess the, the the way I'll sum that that part up from that quote is that we now live in an age where we are living in two different realities so many times. Like I'll see something or hear something from someone and I'll, and I'll think one way, somebody will look and see the exact same thing and have a completely different reaction. And while it's good to have different belief systems, different uh, train of thought, it's just crazy. And we're seeing it, it today, constantly. The past year has just been one thing after another. Uh, you know, in their eyes, oh, this guy just shot three people and walked away free. Yeah. After he was attacked, after he was, uh, one of the dudes who attacked him was, uh, you know, a, a felon and well, I won't even get to the stuff he, he used to do, but you know, it is probably a good thing that guy's in the ground anyway, I'll move on. But in so much of today's world, uh, we live in different realities. I, again, you see it all the time and I don't know if there's hope. I really don't. I'm kind of like, uh, man, if, if I see something one way and somebody else, is there any middle ground? I don't know. Cause it's just like, it's just two different realities all the time. Right. It's uh, it's insurrection on January 6th, but not uh, in the Tennessee, uh, you know, capital and all these other places where uh, there's storm in the capital and doing, th it's just like black is black is white, white is black. And there is no gray. It's just, it, it's, it's just crazy, man. Anyway, uh, two of the final quotes quote, more commonly people who had incurred the displeasure of the party simply disappeared and were never, heard of again by the party, which is capitalized in the quote, I believe they're referring uh, to the government and how, uh, let me see, Netflix walk out over the Dave Chappelle special. And yeah, remember when that happened, uh, how is that relative to that quote? I'm not really sure. Chris Pratt. Oh, I guess basically if you don't fit the party lines, if you don't fit the party mold, if you don't step in and say exactly what you're supposed to, what everyone else is taught to say, or the beliefs they're supposed to do, um, you know, you 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 uh, you're an enemy of the people, basically. And uh, I think we've seen plenty of that going on. You know, think of the things you you say, or you're like, I don't believe in that, but but it's just like things have evolved so rapidly into a certain direction of of just like anarchy and, and the leftist mob is like, you will do what you, you will believe in the things that we are saying you are to believe in and not think for yourself. And it's just like, wait a minute, what about traditions and values? And it's just like, no, you will do, you will submit. And I talked about that a lot during the whole COVID thing. And uh, anyway, I'm sure we'll get another COVID warning on one of our podcasts for there. Way to go. Way to go CDC or YouTube or whoever, whoever's doing it. Anyway, the last one, and I'll wrap things up quote, the possibility of enforcing not only complete obedience to the will of the state, but complete uniformity of opinion on all subjects now existed for the first time. Well, that goes without saying. I mean, free speech. If 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 you don't believe in something that somebody says, uh, the whole Facebook disinformation thing, like we, problematic posts. Well, you know, obviously, if you threaten somebody, that goes without saying. Like that that shouldn't be anywhere. But the things that got flagged on Facebook during COVID or now this like basically hurt hurting feelings content. Like, and if you're not on board with this stuff, like I think like, for instance, I don't agree that so, some of the, the language that coaches are not like allowed to use anymore. And I'm not talking about like swearing, but just like questioning the manhood of a, of a guy or pushing kids to their limits. Like that's gone away pretty much. And I don't agree with that. I'm like, wait a minute where, where was the vote on, on, on these words and tactics that we couldn't use? I don't, uh, it's just like overnight. It just appears that like, no, this is how we're doing things now. And it's just like, wait a minute, what, what are you talking about? Facebook and Twitter sued over online censorship. Yeah. Yeah. Your whole social media platform, uh, censoring every, they, again, the censorship only went in one direction at all times. Uh, I think, you know, president Trump was 
banned from Twitter, but the Ayatollah and uh, the, 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 the Taliban, heck, uh, Putin, he had a Twitter account going still. And uh, anyway, this is all random. I, I should have probably gone through this a little more clean, but it was just, just a point I wanted to make that uh, things have changed dramatically the past few years, especially uh, recent years, you know, I would say the past decades, it's been the slow evolution uh, into into hell, basically, with some of the, some of the things going on. And I'll, and I'll get a little bit more specific, maybe next time on the podcast. But I'm a man that is uh, frustrated by a lot of things in, in, in recent years and just trying to do my best to point them out. And I probably could do a better job of it. And maybe I will uh, when the time comes. But for now, that will end today's show. And I went almost an hour, even though I said I was trying not to. But once you get going, once you get cooking, man, for those of you that made it this far, thank you for tuning in, tuning in. And I will be back this weekend for another episode of the Get Home Safe podcast, possibly with an interview. But if not, it'll be me coming up with something and, and rambling away. Don't forget to uh, follow us on Rumble, the new p- platform, uh, rumble.com, as well as youtube.com, where you can find all of our videos uh, and audio form, of course, uh, Spotify, uh, Amazon, Google, um, all, all that good stuff. You can follow us, uh, Apple, of course. But uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. Appreciate you taking the time out of your Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Friday night, whenever you're listening to the pod. I appreciate you. Send me your feedback. I'd love your thoughts on this one as well as any other podcasts I put out. Uh, Appreciate you guys. I can't believe the month of May is here. It's almost summer. Uh, Man, it'll be sweating buckets here before you know it. Enjoy this overcast weather while we got it here. But guys, as always, no matter what you're doing, whether you're out on the town or around in third base, get home safe.